Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm going to be talking through my anti-aging protocol. Some key points that will be referenced throughout this video are why it's so popular, how I come up, come up with this protocol, um, what thoughts went from my head when I came up with it, the protocol itself, which will be several slides, my concluding thoughts, and any references which I think some of you may find useful for further reading. So why anti-aging is so popular? Um, People are aging much faster nowadays. You know, we've all seen pictures of people on the beach maybe 50 years ago. You know, they're slim, they look healthy, full head of hair, um, unlike me. <laughs> and they just look like a um, breath of fresh air, you know. They look porcelain. Um, nowadays, definitely not true. Um, the diet and lifestyles are also trash as well. People live horrendous lifestyles for the most part. Um, evident in the, for what it's worth, the epidemiology, which does seem to show people tend to be very ill in various different disease states. Um, why else is it popular? Funnily enough, it's because influencers tell you it is. Therefore, they can sell you products you might not need. Um, there are some sort of instances where some may be useful, um, but you'll see in this video why and how I've come up with my choices. Um, anyway, we all want to live well. We want to live for as long as possible. So it's all about health span and lifespan, not just one. So this is my rationale for the protocol. It's a mixture of opinion and scientific backing. Um, so it's what I've looked at overall and what I deem as appropriate for everyone that is watching this video. It's something that every single person that's watching this video right now can do today. There's no exclusions. There's no reason why you can't do these things um, outside of very extreme circumstances, I'm sure. Um, now, these things have been shown to be helpful for reasons which may be linked to anti-aging. Um, bit of a misnomer. I mean, anti-aging itself is... It's just a case where you're trying to slow down aging, not necessarily go backwards. Um, we will all age. We will all eventually fall short of immortality, I think. Um, these are just some things which I don't see everyone doing, which I know will help people. So we should continue. So the first thing, of course, is essential nutrition. What we put in is what we get out. Um, what I am advocating is a carnivorous diet. High in protein, high in animal fat. Um, high is relative. There is no direct guideline for how much I can suggest people to have. It's very individual. Um, I've got different videos about that on my channel, about protein intakes and how to work out macros. Excellent, excellent videos for sure. Um, the other thing, of course, is minimizing anti-nutrients and toxicity. So most nutrients with the least anti-nutrients. What is going to make your body the most efficient? Um, like a racing car, you might think of it that way. Of course, we have the fact that a carnivorous diet will lower deuterium levels to a more appropriate level that is useful for optimizing gut function, improving mitochondrial function. Um, it's kind of a mixed match of things, of course, but what you're looking at is getting to a low insulin state, um, a deuterium depleted state to some extent. And effectively, you're going to try to make your mitochondria do exactly what they're developed over evolution to do. So the first, what do you, the second thing? Get on myself. Um, be connected with the earth and the sun. So this means outside at all times of year. So I don't care if it's raining outside, you'll find a way to be outside. Even if it's behind glass, underneath something, you'll find a way to get fresh air. Um, it's kind of a multifaceted approach. So when you're outside, you'll be in somewhat direct sunlight for the most part. Maybe depends where you live in the hemisphere. Um, and of course, you've got, look, got to look at the time of day. Um, I think something like 15 minutes, three times a day is appropriate for most people. Um, depends where in the world you are, your ethnicity, things like that. But for most people, that's probably going to cover what you what you need to get your vitamin D levels up. Um, so you might split that up maybe upon waking, middle of the day, where the sun's at its highest, um, and the end of the day, just before sunset. That's kind of the times that I'll be looking at. That's going to do quite a bit for your circadian rhythms and things like that. Next is to be grounded for as long as possible. So that means you're effectively barefoot on the grass, in a riverbed, I don't know, in the sea, things like that. Um, 
there are some more and some less conductive materials to stand on. Ideally, you're in contact with the ground to some degree for as long as possible during each day. Um, that's something that's quite hard to do, but you can buy things like grounding mats, grounding mouse pads, um, grounding pillows, you know, all these sort of things. So it is, it is possible to do it a lot more than you're doing right now. Um, that may cost you some money, but long term, it may give you a great benefit. The next thing is that when you're sweating, when you're in the sun, um, you have a slight deuterium depleting effect, which is quite beneficial. So if you have been eating any um, negative foods, shall we say, that would be more useful for your health outcomes. I have a video on deuterium depletion as well. Um, probably try and link this somewhere, maybe up above or something. Um, then we've got the higher detoxification potential by being grounded to the earth. Basically, it comes down to the flow of the electrons in and out of the body and making sure your body is running as efficiently as possible. Um, what all these things will probably do is result in less chronic systemic inflammation. Next, go to sleep and chill for a bit. And it means exactly that. Um, I have a wide range of hours, which I think is appropriate for people. The reason being, um, if I said six hours and people were doing seven and feeling great, they'll try and get away with less. So that'd be stupid. It'd be bad advice. So my suggestion is five to nine hours a night. That's what I seem to think is beneficial for most people. Um, some need more sleep, some need less. Depends on what you're doing during the day. Um, and there is a genetic component to it as well that I'm sure of. Next is to regulate hormones via circadian rhythm. So that means you're getting the effective amount of sleep each night. And ideally, if it is feasible, you're going to get that when the sun is down. So you're going to sleep when it's pitch black. Um, times of year will affect this, of course. What you can do is buy blackout curtains, um, ensure your sleep hygiene is maximized and things like that. So this will ultimately result in appropriate hormone signaling, better stress management and a healthy mind and a healthy body. Next is develop a body to perform. Of course, I'm going to mention this. This is um, my channel. Um, I'm the composition consultant and I build bodies and I help people lose fat. Um, what I'm saying here is don't, you don't have to be a bodybuilder. That's probably not going to be optimal anyway, but I'm going to give you some guidelines here, which I think is appropriate for the most amount of people. Um, so this means foundational level of strength. So what is needed to perform each task that you have to do each day? Um, and how long do you have to do it for? That comes down to endurance and mobility. So if you have to reach a jar or something, I don't know, whatever that happens to be, low down in the kitchen, you're going to be able to do that without injuring yourself. I think that's um, quite a fair and attainable goal for most people. So what you might be able to do to measure this, um, what I think is useful for most people, again, I'm talking about the majority of people here, not necessarily everyone, is to be able to do an unassisted push-up, pull-up, be able to walk for at least 30 minutes to be able to touch your toes. That's something I think will benefit most people if they can do that. Again, I keep saying the wide variety of people. If you're a bricklayer, you may have to be able to perform more than that. So it's not going to equate to your kind of um, daily living. Next is to consult with a professional. So it means someone like myself, um, Jerome Armstrong, Professor Buck K. Someone that has expertise in things like training, exercise, you know, fitness in general, what for as well, fitness could be anything, um, but doing something that you need to be able to perform your given task each day. So we can help you with that. Um, the next thing I'm going to offer you here is a fat-free mass index calculation. So there are calculators for this on, online. Um, if you use your common sense, you'll go onto Google after this video. You'll type in fat-free mass calculator. I'm pretty sure a few results will come up. Um, and you'll, from that, you'll be able to insert maybe your body fat percentage, rough estimate, your height and your weight. And that will give you your fat-free mass index. Now, my recommendations for people, um, not hard rules, but something which seems to give the most bang for your buck in terms of being able to perform daily tasks and be relatively healthy. Um, I believe for females, is 17 to 18 and for males is 20 to 21. For a point of reference, my fat-free mass index is something like 27 or 28, which is too much. 
So I'm not recommending you guys become a, um, a top amateur bodybuilder. Ill-advised, not a anti-aging protocol compatible thing. Anyway, we continue. So the next thing is cultivating human connection. So you may have noticed in the last slide, I mentioned some of my friends, acquaintances online. So Professor Bok, Jerome Armstrong. Um, through meeting people like this, I've been able to mutually benefit. So that means I've given them something to them and they've given something to me. We've made our lives better as a result of knowing each other. Um, through that, we've become more educated. We've gained some, well, I've gained some emotional intelligence. Um, and it's made me a better person overall. So it's very helpful to surround yourself with people that are useful to you and vice versa. Um, and I think communication is something that's very underrated. I'm autistic. My communication skills haven't always been the best, but I've been, at least I found I've been able to experience a better well-being state by having better communication. So if you surround yourself with people that are good at communicating, you'll be able to do that yourself. Um, you'll become better at it anyway. So that kind of comes into longevity to some extent, better quality of life, better mood, perhaps better financial status, things like that. So it will, all these things come into it, honestly. Now, put in what's needed, nothing more, nothing less. This does have some crossover with essential nutrition, but this part of it goes more into the fact that we shouldn't be using substances. Um, if we have to use them um, for any given reason, maybe it's prescribed to you by your healthcare practitioner, you're going to be using the minimal effective dose. So something that gives you what you need, but no more. Um, and something which I'm trying to adopt a little bit now is a minimalist lifestyle. So that doesn't mean necessarily going without everything and being deplete of what you need to function. It means just having the bare minimum. Um, so you're not going to buy a super duper smartphone with a, I don't know, 20,000 pixel camera that you don't need if you don't take um, pictures. You know, you just give yourself the bare minimum. Um, spend what you need to, but no more. Um, I think that offers you less to worry about, less to stress about. There's less things that can go wrong. Um, I spend most of my time stressing, if anything, about technology. So technology, buy what you need, but no more. Um, and I think as well, it's important to keep tabs on your health metrics. So you don't necessarily have to do blood tests, but it's useful to identify both subjective and objective markers. So things that are based on your opinion and things that can be measured. So an example of these, um, I nabbed these actually from Professor Bart K. So a full blood count, a liver and kidney function, HbA1c, fasting blood glucose or insulin, vitamin min and mineral levels, bone density and body fat percentage. Depending on who you are, what you're trying to achieve, what your current status is like. Some of these tests will be more useful than others, but individual, consult with someone that is professional, they'll be able to advise you on what you need to get tested, when, how often, what sort of thing. And I think what is measured can be me can be managed, definitely. So next, in summary, I hope this has been quite concise for you guys, I've tried to keep it that way. Um, nutrition, get that bang on. Stay connected to your surroundings, relax, rest and recuperate. Have a body to perform. Establish human connection. Go back to basics and what's measured can be managed. So here's some references I pulled up. Um, some of these might be useful for you to read. Um, I appreciate that I'm actually sat in front of most of them right now. But if you type, type in the author's name, you'll be able to find some more information about what it is. Um, some are slightly related, some a bit less related. These are a handful of, I believe, 14 references out of several hundred of studies that I looked through, which I thought that makes sense, that doesn't. Now, what I'm gonna to say to you guys is, you have to do all these things before you start investing your money into things that you don't need or may or may not be useful. So these are the minimum. If you're not doing these, forget everything else. Um, I know that sounds a bit abrupt and a bit like, I know better than you, but the thing is I've looked through all these references, I looked through all the science that I could find and these were the things that came to light, in my opinion, as being the most useful. I'm trying to save you guys money, which is why there's going to be no affiliate links in this video. Um, no personal endorsements. These are things that the average person right now, sat at home, can do. Um, and what I'm going to suggest to you guys, after the fact of watching this video, you actually go outside, do some grounding, 
make some friends, be kind to people. All the stuff I've mentioned in this video, um, try and apply as many of these that you can in a given day, um, whilst also meeting your other basic essential needs. So I hope this one's been useful to you guys. Um, if you have any questions, please put them down below. Let me know what you guys have been doing to enhance your anti-aging lifestyle. Thanks very much for watching. Um, leave a like, comment, and also subscribe. Thank you very much.